What does a Kamala Harris administration look like for landlords, for investors, for those of us who make our money in the housing market? What would it look like if Kamala becomes president? Let's discuss. <laughs> All right, y'all, today we are going to talk about what I think it's going to look like uh, should Kamala win the 2024 race, right? Obviously, everybody's aware Biden dropped out, it was Biden versus Trump, now it's Kamala Harris versus Trump, right? We're all on the same page, assassination attempt, old man with dementia, dropout, Harris is in, Trump versus Harris, right? We're all aware of this, right? My opinion, which is the opinion of many, is that Trump would be the best uh, candidate for those of us who make money investing in the real estate market, housing market, all that stuff, right? A lot of investors, a lot of people, uh, you know, playing around money. We're pro-Trump, right? He is, uh, you know, the most famous real estate investor there is, okay? Uh, but then on the flip side, of course, you have a whole bunch of people who are pro-Democrat, pro-Kamala Harris. And today we're going to talk about what I think a Kamala uh, administration would look like for housing investors for landlords, okay? And it ain't great. Now, obviously, she's come into the race quite late, okay? So she was Biden's vice president, of course, and, uh, you know, they pretty much just pushed her to the top, obviously, right? And, um, you know, she got that record uh, record amount of donations in a day, like 80 million or something in a day. Like, that's a record, right? But are, are those actually real donations, or did they just unfreeze the previously frozen uh, 90 – didn't they just, like, unfreeze 80 of the 90 million that they already froze uh, when they decided they wanted to pull a coup on Biden, allegedly? Isn't that what happened? Anyway, I don't know. Let's talk about housing, though. So with her just coming in uh, to the race now, a lot of people think, myself included, that she is – more or less going to continue the status quo of like what her administration, the Biden-Harris administration did, right? Like probably not a lot of changes happening between like what Biden was going to do and what she's going to do. Because, you know, there are those of us who believe that, you know, like somebody like Obama's just pulling the strings from the top of it anyway, right? I don't know if a, a lot of people really are out there thinking Biden was making a lot of these decisions like on his own. So a lot of people think that it's kind of going to be status quo. Uh, a lot of what we were going to get with Biden, we're going to get the exact same thing with Harris, with Kamala Harris, right? And so the question is, like, what's that going to look like for us, right, for landlords, for investors? Well, I'll tell you this. If you work in real estate, and I know a lot of you out there that are in the market, you know uh, four years of Biden was not as awesome as the previous four with Trump, right? As a matter of fact, uh, it was a lot easier to make money in real estate with, like the previous 10 years, right? Uh, you know, Biden comes in and now we got crazy high interest rates, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but, you know, they're still running on this thing, though. We're going to make everything more affordable, this or that. Like, we're not really seeing it out there, but uh, that's what they're claiming. Now, as far as the Biden-Harris housing plan, right? This is what they presented and this is what a lot of people, myself included, believe that is just going to continue. I don't think this late in the game she's changing anything. Uh, I think this is kind of all the plan, regardless of who the front man or front woman is, right? Uh, and again, you know, strings being pulled from the top doesn't really seem like Biden was totally, in, you know, out there independent leading a lot of this stuff. I think what's going to happen is they're pretty much going to rock uh, the plan for the Biden-Harris housing plan that they already had. And there's like three main components of that that I think are really going to affect uh, real estate investors, housing investors quite negatively, right? And they discuss it here and they really want to go after landlords, right? Their, their big thing is going after landlords, right? So if you're making your money renting properties, I don't think uh, Harris administration is going to be good for you, okay? Now, they want to fight rent gouging by corporate landlords, okay? And then they go on to talk about how some of the big publicly traded landlords are gouging tenants and this or that. Like, that's their pitch. Like, oh, 
Black Rock or Blackstone or wherever the fuck it is, right? Shit like that, right? They're, they're going out and saying, we're going to go after evil, horrible conglomerates like that. You know, your corporate landlords. We're, we're going to cap their ability to raise your rent by 5%. You know, they can't go more than 5%, which is crazy uh, because 5% is super low. It would hey, be freaking sweet if, like, gas or groceries could have been capped at 5% year-over-year increase. Like, dude, try to buy a bottle of hot sauce, bro. It's like, used to be like two bucks. Now it's like seven bucks, right? Gallon of gas. Come on. Like, we're back up around four bucks a gallon, dude. Imagine if you could only have those things increase by 5%, right? But they go after the, the landlords. And you know what? Most people would probably be okay with that if it uh, was truly the corporate landlords that they make you think it is. Like if it really was those publicly traded companies that are worth billions, right? I don't think a lot of people would care. People are like, yeah, whatever, you know, do what you got to do to those big companies. But that's the thing, guys, that's the bait and switch. They consider corporate landlords anybody with 50 units or more. And I'm not even talking 50 properties or more, dude. You could be a a person, a professional landlord, professional real estate investor. You can own two 25-unit apartment buildings. Boom! You fall into this as a corporate landlord, and they want to cap you 5% or more, right? Rent control. And that is only the start of the slippery slope, right? So that enough for me as someone who makes my money in the housing industry, as someone who has a lot more than 50 units, right? Uh, I would be no, a no-go on a Kamala Harris presidency just because of that, okay? But there are some other things too. It gets it gets worse, right? They want to crack down on rental fees. They're calling these junk fees, right? The fees that us as landlords can charge to our tenants that are necessary to run our business, right? So like think of the fees, the various fees you have to charge, right? So like if your tenant, you know, they want to pay online, right? Well, you know, you got to charge them a processing fee for that. It's different than if they're they're paying you cash or check, right? Like if they pay you with a, a money order, they got to go to the store. They got to pay the money order fee, right? So if you're offering them like convenience fees, the ability to pay online and stuff, they don't want you to be able to charge for that, right? Uh, what I'm thinking, what I see, the biggest thing I think they would probably go after is application fees, right? Whew. If you're trying to rent a property, y'all, you have to charge application fees because tenant screening is the most important thing, especially if you have a progressive administration like Kamala Harris administration coming in there, dude, and they're probably going to make your life more miserable when it comes to trying to evict people. Uh, <laughs> you got to do the due diligence up front to keep bad tenants out of your property. So that means paying for criminal background checks, right? Paying for eviction searches, things like that. These are things that cost money, right? And if you cannot pass that cost on to the tenants, dude, you're not going to be able to to run your business, right? Because, you know, a lot of people out there, a lot of the woke left are probably going to be like, oh, that's just the cost of doing business. Yeah, but like in the reality uh, of actually running this business, bro, you'll get tenants, tenant applicants, they'll just come up to you and they'll just lie and lie and lie and they'll know they have a bunch of horrible red flags in their background uh, and, you know, if there's a new law that prevents you from charging them to actually do your own due diligence, they're probably going to take advantage and apply to apartment after apartment after apartment after apartment until they find that one sucker who's too cheap to pay the due diligence, right? So it, it really straps investors. It really like ties their hands behind their back if um, they are not allowed to pass these very necessary fees on to the potential pool of people that want to uh, rent their properties. So that is another one, man. That's big. That is super big. So that is another thing that I think a Kamala Harris presidency would be a no-go for real estate investors. And then the last thing, and this is perhaps the scariest thing of them all, they want to expand voucher programs, right? So think about your vouchers, such as your Section 8 vouchers. Now, uh, for those not in the know that don't know about me personally, uh, Section 8, that's my thing. That's my jam, all right? I have made the majority of my money uh, through the Section 8 space, right? I've, I've been dealing with Section 8 tenants for a very long time, thousands of Section 8 tenants, thousands of Section 8 units. Uh, I eat, breathe, sleep, live Section 8 real estate investing, okay? Uh, I happen to love the Section 8 program, but 
there are like a ton of cons that come with the Section 8 program, right? Okay, there are a ton of cons. And the Section 8 program only makes sense when you have certain types of assets, certain types of apartments, right? It doesn't make sense to rent beachfront property to a Section 8 tenant, okay? When you have a beachfront property, you can get all kinds of tenants who are uh, great credit, great income, very responsible on paper, et cetera, et cetera. Those people pose a much lower risk to landlords than a Section 8 tenant. You know, a tenant who by definition is too irresponsible uh, to afford the roof their, over their own head, right? The very most simple and basic human need, shelter, a Section 8 tenant is literally too irresponsible to provide that for themselves and their family, okay? So by definition, they're irresponsible people. You would never want to put those people in a beachfront house, right? Because that would drastically increase your risks of monetary loss as a landlord, right? That's basic stuff. Uh, but here's the thing. You get somebody like Kamala Harris, you get the Democrats in there, you get the left in there. What they do uh, is... You know, and this is happening in many, many markets across the USA, they are increasingly making it harder and harder and harder uh, for landlords to choose the type of tenants they get in their properties. And there are a lot of places making it to where Section 8 is becoming like a protected class and you can't discriminate against Section 8 tenants and things of that nature, right? So with the Kamala Harris presidency, they've come out, you know, the Biden-Harris housing plan here. They've said they want more people on vouchers and then these are the same kind of people that want to make it harder and harder and harder for landlords to not rent to people on vouchers so like smash cut to what's really happening they want more people not working on the government tit and they want them on the vouchers and then they want to make it illegal for you to deny them your housing right so they want these people to be being paid by the government they want them renting your properties folks and i gotta tell you that is bad. That is very, very dangerous. In the right circumstances, I absolutely love the Section 8 program, so I don't want anybody saying, like, oh, this guy doesn't understand how Section 8 works. No, no, no. I eat, breathe, sleep, and live Section 8. Trust me. But there's a time and a place for Section 8. There's a time where it makes financial sense for a landlord to rent a property to a Section 8 tenant. Trust me, I do it many, 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 many times every single friggin' month, every week, every day, uh, but it doesn't make sense in certain situations, and I am all in favor of private property rights and the landlord having uh, the right and the ability to decide when Section 8 does and does not make sense for their business, and it appears to me, based upon uh, their own policies, their own housing policies that they're publishing here, uh, that I think Kamala Harris does not want landlords to have that right, right? So these are uh, the biggest takeaways that I got from what I think a Kamala Harris presidency would look like for housing investors, landlords, uh, real estate investors, etc. I think, in a nutshell, it'd be really bad. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.